In the previous lecture, we learned how to refer to an object using the Excel object hierarchy. Now that we can refer to the object, let's learn how to manipulate it. In order to perform some automation with an Excel object such as a range, we need to be able to do two things. Read or modify its characteristic known as properties and perform an action which is also known as a method. We can read the property of an object and for some objects, we can even modify them. Let's start with the value property of the range object which stores the value contained within a cell. We're going to display the value in the image window. We can refer to the range directly as we have learned in the last lesson. Press dot. We get the IntelliSense autofill list which lists both properties and methods. Both have separate icons. Properties have the icon of a hand and an envelope or at least that's what it looks like. And methods have the icon of a flying brick or a book. Anyways, let's choose the value property. Start typing the name tab to accept the selection and F5 to run the macro. The value in cell A1 gets printed. Great. And note that we cannot run this code without the debug.print part since just range.value is not an instruction. An instruction would be to display this value as in using the debug.print method or assign this value to a variable or even change the value. We could however read the value as is within the image at window. Let's do that. Copy, come down to the image at window, place a question mark, paste in the code for a property, press enter and we get the value for a property. This is a good trick if you just want to confirm the value of certain object properties before using them. Clear the image at window. Next, we can even assign some value to the cell. Assignment is denoted by an equal to sign. So equal to, we'll add the text user within double quotes. This line of code is called an assignment statement where we assign the value on the right side of the assignment operator to the left hand side of the operator. This is a complete instruction and we can run the code as is. Press F5 and let's go to our sheet and the value user is printed into cell A1. We can even assign the property of one range object to another range object. So let's copy and paste it on the right hand side and we'll assign the value in cell A1 to cell A3. Run the code, go to our worksheet and the value in cell A1 gets printed into cell A3. Note that we cannot modify properties of every object. Some properties are read only. For example, let's count the number of sheets in a workbook. We will use the count property of the sheets collection object. So sheets and dot count. Let's run the macro. Two gets printed because we have two worksheets in our current workbook. So now let's try and change the number of worksheets by assigning the value three to the count property and run the macro. Get an error message saying that we can't make changes to a read-only property. The correct way to change the count of the worksheets in a workbook would be to first add a new worksheet and then check the count. Let's click OK and stop the execution. Now range object can have multiple properties. Suppose we want to change the size, value and font styles of cell A1. We could execute this logic using four separate statements where each time we specify the same range object or we can specify the range object just once using the width block statements. Let's create a new sub to compare our two pieces of code. So here we'll type in the keyword width that signifies the start of the width statement followed by the object that we want to operate on which is range A1. When using a construct where we need to start and end a group of statements such as with and end with, I like to first end the with statement before typing out the code logic. So enter, enter and end with. Bring your cursor between the two with statements. Now with and end with signifies a new logic level within this sub procedure. So we'll need to add an indent. Press tab, type in a dot. And we get the same member list that's available against the range object. Let's add the properties. First is value. I'm just going to copy over the rest. I will add an extra property just so that we can visually see that a change has been made after we run this code. So let's change the font color.
Keeping the cursor within the second sub, let's run the macro F5, go to the worksheet, and the contents in the cell have changed. Notice that we are repeating the font object several times. We can add another with statement within a current with statement to focus solely on the font object. So create a line after the value property, add in a with statement followed by the object, which is dot font tab, come to the bottom where we want the second with statement to end. Let's select our code and add another tab to signify another logic level. And now we don't need to refer to the font object. So let's delete those references. And I'm just going to switch the color. OK, let's run the code and go to the worksheet and inspect the changes and the contents have changed correctly. One important point to note is that using with statements are faster for code execution than writing these individual statements. Because in with statements, we refer to the base object only once, meaning that VBA does not need to evaluate the same object reference multiple times. And we can even use methods within with statement if we want. We will cover methods shortly in this video. But since we are on the topic of with statements, let's check out a more advanced example. This is the code to send out an email. Let's just focus on the with statement. Here we are working with the mail object, which represents an email. And within the with statement, we populate the to CC BCC subject and the email body. And once that's done, we will send the email by calling the send method. We can perform a certain action with an object using its methods. For example, Let's copy the value in cell A1 and paste it into cell A3. So range A1 dot choose the copy method tab and press the space bar to add a space. We see a yellow bar with the help text regarding the method. This help text shows the definition of any function. It appears after you press a space bar or an open parenthesis. This is a topic related to functions, which we will cover in depth in a later chapter. For now, we need to understand that a method, which is also a function, may require extra information to further customize the output of said function. For example, let's activate sheet one using the activate method. So here we are referencing the worksheet code name directly dot choose the activate method, press a space bar. Nothing happens. We don't see any help text. That is because the activate method doesn't require any more pieces of information. These pieces of information are defined at the time of the function setup and they are called parameters. And these parameters may be required or optional. And the value that we pass into the function or the method is called an argument. So let's see this in action. We can see here that the copy function takes the parameter destination. Destination is wrapped in square brackets. This means that this is an optional parameter. In other words, we can simply copy and hold the copy value in memory to paste later on, or we can provide a destination cell or range reference where we would like to paste this value immediately. So space and let's type in our range, which is range A3. In this context, range A3 is the argument that we are passing through or providing to the copy function. OK, let's run this code. Let's check out the output. The value from cell A1 has been pasted into cell A3. There is one more thing to note here. We can explicitly state the name of the parameter against the argument that we are providing. Let's do that. So we'll add the name of the parameter destination before the argument, followed by a colon and an equal to range A3 is now called a name argument. This is handy when a method accepts more than one argument. It improves readability and we don't need to worry about positioning the arguments in the sequence in which the associated parameters are defined. And arguments are not restricted to methods. We can have them in properties as well. Let's look at the offset property of the range object. The offset property is similar to the offset function in Excel. It returns the cell that we want to move to from a starting cell location. 
So let's grab the value from one cell to the right of cell A1, which is cell B1. So dot, choose the offset property and open parenthesis. And we get the helper text stating that we could provide a row value to offset by and a column value as well. We want to move one cell to the right, which is zero rows and one column. And now that we are at the cell to the right of cell A1, we can grab its value using the value property. And we'll need to print this out. Okay, F5. Great, we get the value. When starting out, you may be tempted to select objects, especially cells, before using them in VBA. So let's delete the value in cell A1. Just to highlight this issue, let's perform this action by recording a macro. Click in any cell besides cell A1. Let's go to the developer tab. Click on record macro. Make sure this workbook is selected. Click OK. Click onto cell A1. Press delete on the keyboard and stop the recording. Let's go to the VB editor to inspect our code. Our macro has been recorded in module two and here are our two lines of code. First, we select the range and then we clear the contents of that selection. And this is the issue that we'll address now. As a beginner programmer, we may be tempted to write code in this fashion where we select an object before doing something with it. And why not? It does seem intuitive because that's exactly what we would do in Excel. If we want to start typing into a cell, we would first click onto it and then start typing. And by clicking onto the cell, we are in fact telling Excel that this is the cell that we want to modify. And in VBA lingo, clicking onto the cell is basically selecting the cell or rather calling the select method of the range object. And new VBA programmers tend to follow this logic while coding as well. That is select and then modify. But what if I tell you that while coding, we don't need to select an object before modifying it. Let's break this logic down. Our rule for modifying objects tells us that we need to identify an object first and then we can do something with it. So range A1 is identifying the cell or range object, which means part one of the rule is already satisfied and we are free to modify the object as we please. So we don't need the extra overhead of selecting the object at all. Let's just delete out the select part and directly call the clear contents method on the range object. So this is the better way of writing on the same logic. Selecting objects is inefficient and slows down the code. And I would recommend avoiding that practice. And one final note is that you don't need to remember each and every property or method for each and every object. If you want to check what properties are available for an object, keep your cursor on the object and press F1. We will come to the Microsoft online help pages. But right now we are at the range property. What we want is the range object. So click on the range object. And now to the right, we have a list of all the methods and all the properties. We can also seek help within Excel by exploring the object browser. And we'll do this in the next lesson.